This was all for you. Did you like it? He didn't love it. Who's out there? Oh. Oh. Yeah. Do you have a lot to say? I realize I'm stepping kind of far outside the definition of fiber arts for this video, but uh, just go with me on it, okay? Honestly, I just had to share this because it was such a delight. I promise there will be a lot more stitching and knotting in the near future, although I can't promise that there won't be many more jaunts into random crafting worlds. Yeah, because I'm suddenly turning into a very crafty person. I used to just have a list of embroidery projects. Then I added a list of sewing projects, which I have not touched yet. Then I got the list of macrame projects, once I learned that. Now I'm starting to create this list of just sort of random things, miniatures and wooden projects and cardboard projects and cement projects and all sorts of mediums because all of a sudden I'm just like in the mood to make random, aesthetically pleasing, enjoyable things. It's a good mood to be in. So my husband and I, somewhat surprisingly, I guess, don't have a lot in common. Like we share none of the same hobbies. He's always trying to get me to play video games and I am forever trying to get him to read a book. And we are always looking for something that we can do together other than collapsing on the couch and binging YouTube videos. Which is why when we both took a random interest in making our own water fountain, I jumped on that train real fast. We both do enjoy the sound of running water. Google plays us a rainstorm or a babbling brook or something when we go to sleep. Okay, Google. Good night. Good night, Mateus. Did you bring me your sock? You say your sock? So he's been wanting a little desktop fountain for a while and we looked around a little bit for one and then in typical me form, I thought, hey, why don't I just make one? We did this rather on a whim, which is why I'm just now recording the chatty bits, even though we have already completely finished the project. I did take the time to stop and film the process as we went though, a little bit. At first we thought we could just make it out of clay, but we found a large collection of YouTube videos of people making their own fountains and everyone was using cement. Obviously for like a big outdoor fountain, that's what you'd use. I didn't really think that that was what people used used for little indoor ones, but it is the easiest material to use that won't wear away or corrode or be damaged at all by the water constantly running over it. This is all kind of new for me, but the process did remind me a little of making prosthetics, which I used to do in college a lot. So I don't feel totally in the dark here. Still, we thought it would be better to try our hand at a more simple design than the original desktop fountain that we were imagining, which like involves a mountain and a little house and a bunch of stuff that Hopefully I'll be doing in the future. Hence, the dog bowl. We went to the store and got rapid set cemental, foam board insulation, an extra small water pump, tubing, drywall mesh, cheap paint brushes, a hobby knife, these tool things, a spray bottle, mixing tubs, and gloves. Now the research we did for this project was um, iffy at best. We mostly just watched a bunch of those lovely YouTube videos, but they're pretty much all time lapses. We didn't really find any where somebody explained their process or gave any sort of tips or tricks. We probably could have, but I got bored. I did find one blog from a woman who does cement and concrete crafting. So that's where I got information like when adding more concrete, to already dried stuff, you need to spray it down with water first, or that using rough fabric or drywall mesh on a smooth surface will help the concrete stick better and not like flake off once it's dried. That's all still a little bit of conjecture, but that's kind of what we gleaned. You know, here I was saying how absolutely beautiful it is in LA in the summer, because in July and August, compared to like Florida and Texas and Oklahoma where I've lived before, it was gorgeous outside. Yeah, hot, but like not blech, hot. And then September came. September when everything is supposed to be sloping off to cool temperatures again. And all of a sudden it is freaking blazing outside. And our AC has decided that it really can't handle that pressure. So it just likes to not work sometimes. 
I mean, luckily it's not not working at all. It at least does come on most of the time, just that sometimes it doesn't do that. So it'll get up to like 80 degrees in here and then the AC will finally be like, eh, all right, I guess maybe I'll give it a go. We decided to make the base or like the inner mold, I guess, of the whole thing out of foam board insulation because we did not want this to be just one chunk of cement, that would be extremely heavy. So we needed something to build up the shape of it first, and then we would just cover it in cement. The only stuff we could find at the one store we visited, couldn't be bothered to go to another one, was this half inch foam. And a thinner one probably would have been easier to use, particularly because our X-Acto knife could not go all the way through this foam. So we ended up using kitchen knives a lot and probably ruining those kitchen knives in order to carve away at it. My original design was a food and water bowl attached. So the water bowl on one side was gonna have the water fountain going into it. And then on the other side, sort of in a lima bean shape, there was gonna be a hole where we could insert the food bowl. We decided to scrap that and go even simpler with just the water bowl basin and the little stair step waterfall in the back to go into it. The design is kind of like not that aesthetically pleasing because we had no idea what we were doing. We started by cutting this one board into four different pieces, and then we stacked those four quarters on top of each other and cut a dinner plate sized round hole in the center of the top three. After hot gluing these together, I shaved off the sides so it wasn't so squarish. We figured out where the water pump should go and then momentarily considered basically walling it off with like a little opening that we could put a water filter in front of because, you know, we expected that maybe the dog would drink out of this and we wanted the water to be nice and clean and filtered. And then we realized that would be hard. So we gave up on that. Next was the long process of figuring out what shape the actual fountain part would be, which like, we were so winging it. I basically thought, hey, it would be most simple to just do like, three stair steps, but then we were trying to make it kind of curved to match the curve of the bowl. And then we decided we needed it to be raised off of the basin so that we could easily take the pump in and out and it wasn't like permanently glued in there. So we ended up just cutting out like three rectangle-ish pieces of foam. Matt used his drill to drill a half inch hole in one side so we could put the tubing through it. And then we just kind of stacked them up and shifted them around and carved away at bits until we got something sort of okay-ish. And this is what we ended up with. Our plan is to cover each piece with cement separately and then stick them together with more cement. I wish I could tell you the ratio we used here, but we gave up on ratios so fast. At first we did a one-to-one, -one, which I thought I had seen somewhere on how to make cement. It was basically just dirty water. So we added way more cement to that, cut it in half, eventually got it up to a decent consistency and started slapping it on that basin. I should have pre-taped it with all the drywall mesh since it is sticky on one side and would have stayed on its own, but... Uh... <laughs> Planning ahead only goes so far for me. The tape was definitely super helpful in getting the cement to stick to the sides instead of just running straight off. It took two rounds of mixture, but eventually we got the whole thing covered and moved on to the stair steps. We tried another ratio mixing this batch of cement, which we based off of the information on the bag itself. That information was based on the entire bag. So I think we still got it wrong somehow. This time it was way too dry. We kept adding tiny bits more water. Once again, got it up to a good consistency by just guesswork. On this piece, we also abandoned our tools and just started slapping the stuff on there with our hands. Matt wore gloves like a smart person and I did not like a person who really enjoys getting my hands dirty. I will say it wasn't that bad. It dried out my hands a little bit, but it all washed off just fine. Once the cement started to get a little drier and to set a bit, we also started using it as like a clay mixture to mold the walls around the top of these stair steps that will hold the water in and guide it in the proper direction. Balancing this piece while working on it was the hard part. So eventually to finish the bottom part and the back side, Matt just held it and that made it way easier. We then went ahead and put a layer of cement on the basin where we're gonna stick this on, stuck the top part on there. And then we used a little rock to hold up the other edge just to make sure that it didn't tilt at all while it was drying. The rapid set cementol is supposed to set in like one hour, but we let it dry for several just to be safe before I went back in to try to sand it a little bit. Have you ever stepped on the floor of a pool and it feels like instantly your feet have just been shredded to bits because the 
the floor is so rough. That is what this felt like. So I tried to sand it down a little bit using a tip I had found on the blog. She said to take your leftover cement and make it into this sort of pumice stone puck and then use that to sand down your other cement. And this does work. It worked. It was just so loud, exceptionally loud. <laughs> And because we live in an apartment complex with a lot of people around us, I felt really guilty making that much noise. So I just kind of hit some of the roughest parts and then left the rest. We set it out overnight, again, just to be safe before we actually put water in it. And then the next morning I rinsed it as well as I could, considering we don't have a hose to use. That way I could just get out any like dust and rock bits and so the water itself wouldn't be cloudy. Matt cut down the tube on both sides, added an adapter, stuck the pump in there, and we tried it. Too strong! <laughs> <laughs> oh no. Ta-da! It was a little messy. So the pump, despite being extra small and the smallest one we could find at the store we went to, is still meant to pump up to 18 inches high and ours is like maybe like six to eight inches. So we have a lot more power pushing out the water than we needed. Also this ledge on the front was not a sharp enough slope. So the water was doing that really annoying thing water does where it sticks to stuff and defies gravity and therefore half of it was pouring out the back. We were still really excited by the general success of this, but it's back to the drawing board. I mean, not really. I quickly mixed up one more little pot of cement and we were able to fix all the problems in like 10 minutes. We started by filling in this little gap we had made for the cord in the back just so that we could fill the basin higher. And then we raised the walls on all sides and finally made this little slope in the front so that the water would actually shoot off into the basin rather than tucking under. While that dried again and Matt went to work, I did some other stuff, but I also went to the store to buy some rocks. Wish I could have found rocks in, you know, nature, but I really wanted like nice, pebbly, aesthetically pleasing rocks. And the only rocks around us are the kind that look like they crumbled off the side of a mountain and they're half made of sand. These will hide the pump as well as hide the top of the tube where the water comes out so that the whole thing looks more picturesque. So once we tested it again, the slope that we had put into the basin did work this time. However, we still didn't build the walls high enough. We kind of figured out by reshaping the top of the tube and by conveniently putting rocks in there just the right way to guide the water, we could avoid the overspill on the walls. But I didn't want to leave it that way and like have to play around with it every time we turned it on. So I just went one more time, made a teeny tiny little batch of more cement and built up the walls again. And then it was time to test it with the puppy. It is a water bowl after all, it is for him. Link has a really interesting relationship with water where he hates it, but he also loves it. Like bath time is basically torture for him. Like how dare we get him wet? But we used to take him to a dog park that was on the edge of a lake. And once we taught him how to swim, cause yeah, I did have to actually teach him how to swim. He started loving it. He would run straight for the water every time we got there and just get soaking wet. So we kind of discovered that he likes water as long as it's on his own terms and his terms are very picky. So no baths, no being taken into water forcibly, no being sprayed with water, like with a hose or sprinkler or anything like that. He's not into it. Therefore, we kind of knew in advance that the mere noise that this fountain made and the, you know, movement in it would probably turn him off. And we were right. The second I turned it on, he backed away like a monster had shown up. He did warm up to it a little bit though. I got him to take a little taste out of the bowl. He was okay with it. He just didn't seem generally 
enthused. Were we surprised? No, we were not. But hey, we're happy with it. It's probably gonna end up sitting outside where we don't have any power to plug it in. And then maybe every once in a while, we'll, you know, drag a power cord out there and, and let it run for a little bit. I think more importantly, this was a good first project in the world of making water fountains, using cement, even just carving foam. So this is something that I definitely want to try again. I have couple other designs in my head already. They do take up a lot more space than the other crafts I do though. So I don't think I can just like go nuts on this. So this wasn't exactly a cheap project. Um, I think everything that we bought in the end was around like $150, but it is the kind of project that is really cheap the second time you do it. If I make a second fountain, I have everything I need. I have all the tools, I have plenty of more cement, I have more tubing, I even have more foam. Basically the only thing I would have to buy is another water pump. And let's be honest, I'd probably just steal the water pump out of the first fountain and move it into the new one. But this is really good motivation to do this whole thing again and make another water fountain. Hopefully this one a little less explosive, a little less overflowy, a little less chunky, and a little better for actually setting on a desktop. So thanks for joining me on this new exploration. I guess I gotta make a new playlist for this. It doesn't really go under the fiber arts one. If you work with cement or concrete or you know, you've made your own water fountain or anything, I'd, I'd love to hear what you made in the past and any tips or tricks that you know. Cause again, we guessed on a lot of it. Lots of new project videos will be coming in the future. So I hope that you enjoy watching these. I hope that you will subscribe. I love having you guys here. I love getting to make these videos and I love getting to make random things that I have no room for. Crafting. All right, and I gotta go turn on the AC because it's really hot in here now. So, bye!